Okay, I'm feeling very excited. This is my first talk at Black Hat. So, very excited to see you all. And uh, I will be presenting uh, Let's Play App Planting. And before that, let me tell I'm from India. And uh, any guesses, what is this? Uh, Hello is a is, uh, famous magazine all around the world. Okay, so this is Hello from India. <laughs> So technically, hello from India. Hi everyone and welcome for this presentation. Um, yeah, this is Ashwar Rai. So who answered? Uh, you saw it on the board, but uh, let me set an example over here. Uh, here's a small goodie for you. Okay. So yeah, there are more goodies for answers. So that's how I condition my audience. Okay, so about the app planting. First, I would like to put some disclaimers so that the medias and anyone from Google here? Good, I'm not asking for bounty if you are there. <laughs> okay, fine, thank you. So, um, it's a personal research. Uh, all the views which are presented over here or the research which has been done, it's personal. Uh, it doesn't express the views of or the opinion of my employer. And uh, the vulnerability which I'll be talking about uh, is being fixed by Google. Okay, so uh, I found it in somewhere in September, uh, and this is March, so it's around six months. So, and Google is doing pretty good work in fixing their vulnerability issues. So, this this has been fixed. So, <laughs> yeah, but we can uh, discuss all the theory behind it. Uh, my brief introduction, uh, I'm co-founder of Null. Null is a security community in India. It's the largest community in India, around 2,000 members on mailing list. Plus, we have chapters uh, at six major cities in India. We all meet monthly, and uh, twice a year we conduct a conference called NullCon in Goa and in Delhi. Uh, and as of now, uh, I'm working with Semantics, Net backup product family, I'm based out in Pune. And apart from that, I'm involved with various projects for uh, research, security research on critical infrastructure related to information uh, with government of India. So here's my my duty. <laughs> I had to flash this. Okay. So <laughs> apart from working at Semantic. Uh, I am part of Nullcon, uh, and this has been in news, and we have been facing severe criticism uh, for having uh, in Government of India sponsor a bug bounty program. Uh, it was to probe a botnet network, and uh, this has been criticized by uh, many people. Uh, David Dittrich uh, from Honeynet, etc. So. Yeah, I, I won't be uh, going into the controversy of that, but yeah, bug bounty is something which uh, attracts many people's attention, and many people just attack Google or Google's various services just to gain gain the bounties. Uh, but I had different motivations. I'll just talk about it. <laughs> okay, any questions so far? But I always face two questions. So whenever uh, people know about what I do, uh, so I try to quote it like I'm a security researcher, try to uh, keep away the bad guys, etc. Et oh, so you are a hacker. Uh, yeah, sort of. So then people ask me two questions. Any guesses? What, what usually what people ask? What are the two questions people ask you? Any guesses? Oh, cool. There you go. Bingo. So, <laughs> so here, here, here's one for you. Where, where are you? Who answered that? Okay. Decent public here. I mean, uh, anyone could have raised their hands because I didn't saw it. If you can just, yeah. Thank you. Yes, that's the first question anyone asked me or everybody asked me. So, that's the first question and the another one is, 
this. So you also get the same question. <laughs> so yeah, so if it would have been that easy, I wouldn't have been working with uh, semantic and I wouldn't have been running around organizing the conferences and running a community. Yeah, but these are the two questions. So if I say, no, I can't do this, then people doubt that, are you a hacker? So <laughs> if you say no, then it's it's really doubt on your ability. So this was one motivation uh, that, okay, I can't do this because I know uh, their uh, banks and uh, Gmail or Google or Facebook, they're going, uh, doing very good work on securing their users and their data, etc. Uh, but still, I mean, no one is perfect and security is a moving target and there's nothing called absolute security. So why not give it a shot? Okay. So that was one of the motivations. So that motivation led me to do something which is app planting and it involves both. It's getting into the uh, Gmail or Google account of uh, someone, ta very targeted attack. Okay, and then hack the bank accounts, make money, etc. So this app planting is a very, very targeted attack. Okay, so I would like to tell, I mean, those people who also want to attend any other talk in another room, I will just, if you want to know what is coming up in the paper, I will just sum it up over here. It's about the design gap in the Google's Play Store. Okay. Uh, so it can be, ex it was uh, exploitable over XSS and a uh, few other tricks. So it was uh, somewhere in September, early August. So now this has been fixed. So it's no more a zero day now. Okay, and uh, the basic aim of this presentation is to create awareness about uh, the some new possibilities of attacks, which I have named as app planting. Okay, I don't claim that you will be succeeding in this attack or you will not be succeeding in this attack. Maybe there can be another attack vector using which you can carry out similar attack. But I definitely claim that uh, there will be such attacks in future, not only with Android, but other platforms as well. Okay. Yeah, so this is what is coming up. And what motivated me to write this paper? Um, Last year, I had written a paper, How Secure is Internet Banking in India, where I had uh, researched on eight different banks' uh, way of handling the data, way of uh, securing the data, securing the transactions, re-authenticating the user, transmitting the data over the wire, plus storing the back data at the back end. Okay. So uh, this got uh, good uh, attention or good uh, media attention. Uh, and many banks are not doing very good job over there. So this was uh, very well received from the banks as well. Uh, here, uh, in uh, during when I was researching on this topic, I found few things which were interesting and which led me to write this paper. So every bank, okay, uh, they have some of your data, your email ID, etc., plus your phone number. And banks have started to identify you by your phone. If you lose your password or you want to reset your password, then everyone gets this one-time password on your cell phone, right? So, yeah. So basically, bank identifies you by your phone, okay? So, and the another thing is, uh, earlier many banks were using RSA in India, but now they have moved to a cheaper option. Now they feel that it's a very, very strong authentication factor. And so they have moved to phone as a reliable and cheaper alternative. Okay. So yeah, so this is the basic uh, issue, uh, the basic concern that phone is your identity. Not only bank, but all the social networking sites which you use, they all identify you by your phone. So phone is basically your identity. And even apart from the social sites and the banking sites, phone is your identity. 
again this happens uh, with me not this <laughs> when i come late from office to home then only if i give ring on my wife's mobile only then the door is opened otherwise <laughs> so yeah mobile is your identity okay uh anyone knows who this guy is so goodie for someone who answers this and he is not from india <laughs> Yes, he is a cricketer. There he goes. He is Dhoni. He is captain of Indian team. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So he's uh, he has taken a big campaign of planting trees for uh, environment thing. I'm not that green person, but I'm very much associated with that green Android green. So I got inspired by him and. I will name it app planting, okay, and yeah. So this is our playground where we will be playing this. So this is the Play Store, okay, and uh, just to test out my attacks, I choose our own app which we had put. We have Black Hat app also, so it's, it's a cool app. I have tried it. So this is our playground now. There are some rules over here. We need to understand the rules so that we can play better and we can cheat and possibly win. Okay. So the rule is, uh, whenever you want to install an app, you have to search for the app, select an app, and what you have to do is say install. Okay. And behind the scene, what happens over the wire is uh, finally there is this post request which is sent to the server. Okay, and out of this, uh, there are only few things which are interesting. So this is the key part. This is the uh, app ID, the app which you want to install. Plus, this is the device ID. So this is unique for any Android device. And here is a token which is randomly generated. Okay. Now the thing is. If you have access to this token and this information, which is constant, this is only variable, and this is something what you know or you can choose. Okay, so these are few important fields. Okay, if you have this field, you can recreate this entire stuff. Okay, that's that's one key thing. Okay. Now with this knowledge, what we can do? <coughs> so, yeah. So there was an XSS vulnerability in uh, Play Store. Okay. So, yeah. With XSS, what you can do is you can steal the cookie, right? So, what else you can do with XSS? If you know that there is an XSS, so <laughs> yes, you can steal the cookie and simulate the person, etc., etc. Okay, that's that's one thing that you can do, and the another thing is, uh, yeah, you can get all the parameters and try to replay it. Okay, and then try to install an app on someone's phone. But yeah, this is XSS which I found. Okay, this slide should have been earlier. Yeah, so this was the flaw in Google Play Store where you can uh, inject your script uh, with search or with some other fields, and then you can run your script on client's browser. Okay, so. There's another way you can exploit this. Okay. So there is install button over there. Okay. So simply I choose to click that install button by script. Instead of uh, grabbing the cookies and then replaying the things, uh, right at the time when you want to execute the script on client side, just click the install just click the install by script 
so there are various ways so there are few things which work with some browser few things works with other browser so i have listed all possible things so you can choose any one of this and then what you can do is like this by clicking the install you will see it is installed and you can initiate the installation over there. So this is a Google's facility where you can choose an app to install on your phone from the Play Store, from your desktop, and over there that app will be automatically installed on your phone. So let's see in action how to exploit this in the real world. So I can send some link to a friend. Okay. So for POC, I uh, use our own uh, website's URL. So once you click onto the URL, it will open up the site and the site has a code which also sends a request with XSS attack uh, to Play Store. And it is called on load of this page. So there will be another page, another tab which will be having a request to Play Store with exploitation of the XSS vulnerability and it will by script it will uh, do the install uh, click on install and then what you will see is installed and the app will be planted on the phone so this is how it works and with this what we can do is we can if if we can install or we can spoof an application on someone's phone right without his knowledge what we can do is install a rogue application right okay um, i tried doing that but the problem with this is you have to get an application which is rogue and you have to get it into the play store right so that seems to be a difficult part Okay, and even if you succeed in that, you don't have a guarantee that uh, the application or the rogue application will stay over there, right? So I thought of uh, taking a different way. So there are a lot of legitimate applications, SMS forwarders. Okay, this, these applications provide a feature to selectively forward the SMS. Okay, you can set the rules whatever you want and those can be forwarded to you okay so you can install one application or you can write an application legitimate application which will selectively forward you the sms and you know what type of sms you will choose to forward all one time passwords right so can you get the gmail access now Yes, can we get the bank's password reset, one-time password? Yes, you can, okay. So, yeah, this is what you can gain. If you create a legitimate application, yeah, this is forward. Forward the credentials, you can get the credentials for banking. Also, you can do for Facebook, okay and likewise any other uh, social sites so i'm having tough time now the problem with this is uh, i'm not able to access my facebook because facebook has sense that i'm accessing uh, facebook service from amsterdam and i'm a native of indian uh, country indian uh, region so it's not allowing me to log in and the authentication or uh, reconfirmation which it offers is authenticate by phone and now i'm not able to access my phone because i'm not on uh, international roaming so this is a very good facility but again a pain yeah so let me run the video demonstration since the vulnerability is patch i can't show you live but this was a uh, video which i had taken so I send a mail uh, link. 
So once you click on the link, I'm reloading it. And then there's the XSS. And the page is forked for App Store. And there you see the, here you can see that the application installation has started automatically. and it says installed. <clears throat> so have you all tried uh, installing apps over there, everyone? You do that? Yeah, so, so let me show the part where it just clicked. I'm reloading the page and on load, it calls the See, it has called the uh, Play Store, and yeah, here it has started started to install. Video quality is so so because I wanted to have my phone and the browser in in the same frame. So that is how you can choose an application to install on someone's Android device exploiting this vulnerability. I'm just forwarding it. Yeah, the app is installed. If a user is careless, doesn't pay much attention to what has been installed on his phone, then definitely he is in trouble. Um, this at attack may not be, uh, or this, even if I install an app on your phone, you may pay attention and you may uninstall it. But uh, this attack is definitely for those people whom if you ask, do you know Black Hat, then they will reply. I don't have one or I have a blue or a white hat. So <laughs> this attack is mostly for them. Yeah, uh, but it's it's always a good practice to pay attention to what is going on over your mobile. Many a times uh, we think that it's an update. So whatever is there on the top bar, we ignore it, but that's not a good thing. Okay. Uh, I would like to thank uh, to uh, John uh, Obernheide and Thomas Cannot. Okay, so they had previously done a lot of research on this, um, but uh, they were not uh, successful in exploiting it, uh, exploiting uh, this vulnerability over the web. One find accesses in the Play Store, one found uh, automatic app installation uh, from the phone itself, but not over there. Okay, but their research helped me a lot to put this paper together. Okay, now since Google has patched this vulnerability, okay, so the question is, is this attack methodology applicable or is it any useful or is it any good for, for future attacks? So this is what I would like to say. Man in mobile is a, very powerful exploitation vector. Just we have seen that what we thought was impossible, like getting into someone's Google account or getting into someone's banking account, it, it looks very easy and possible with this, right? Uh, getting, it, getting into mobile. Being <coughs> man in mobile, you become very, very powerful and you can do many things. Okay, it's, it's very common to uh, to install a uh, software or a malware on someone's uh, desktop and then sneak through all, all the communication, etc. Um, put backdoors, etc. But 
uh, that won't guarantee you access to the banks, right? But this will definitely. Okay, so this was one vector through which I tried to plant an app in someone's phone. In future, there can uh, there can be many other vectors because uh, in the current model of the Google's uh, Play Store uh, app installation technique, it's just the three main parameters which I had showed earlier. If you can uh, produce those three parameters and send it to Google with uh, with a proper properly framed uh, request, then you can initiate an app installation on anybody's phone, right? Yeah. initiating the app the app installation from the browser. Yeah. Right. Exactly, exactly. The problem is uh, when you are opening a mail in your Google account, you are automatically authenticated, right? And you can access the Play Store with the credentials of your Gmail because it's linked with a uh, Google account, okay? So, and the single sign-on. So, you don't need to re-authenticate yourself, okay? So, what Google has done for this is when I had found this and had words with them. So they have changed the uh, way of installing the app. Now it's not that you click the install and it gets installed. Now Play Store will represent a dialog where it will show that your uh, this app is uh, compatible with your phone, okay? And which app you uh, which device you want to choose. If you have multiple Android device, then it also offers you to choose a device on which device you want to install that. So it's not direct now. Google has made it uh, two steps difficult, okay? But the thing is, uh, sorry? Oh, okay. So yeah, I mean, earlier it's it was just click install and it was done. Now you have to do two more steps. Two more clicks are involved over here, but the basic remains the same. The final click and the final post request will have the information which I had mentioned. If you can get that information by any means, yes you can plant an app, right? Could the transmission from, the, from Google to the mobile be done over the USSD? Could you subvert the USSD transmission? Yes, uh, that, that is also another vector, but I haven't explored that. Okay, yeah, that, that could have been. So, um, when I was writing this paper, there were talks uh, of exploiting the things over USSD uh, in our Nullcon also, plus Eco Party also. Uh, but since I found an XSS, so I was really focused on this. But yes, I mean, I haven't tried it, but yeah, that's quite possible. I mean, I, I like the thought which you have. I would like to present you this. <laughs> Pleasure. Thank you. Right, so so that is from the USSD. Here I'm just keeping it simple. I'm using the Google's uh, Gmail's authentication factor for sneaking in the app. So just just very plain simple. Yeah. <laughs> so so here is my take on the future of app and the real challenge in stopping this type of attack is this: uh, you can't differentiate between the app installation initiated by a user or forcefully initiated by someone else, okay? So it, it's, it will be a challenge for the security companies to identify such type of attacks and stop it because what you are doing is just installing an app from an app store, right? So that's a legitimate activity. And to identify who is doing this, either you are choosing to install an app 
or you have interest to install an app. <coughs> so that identifying that is a difficult challenge. Yes, and Google has done that. So they have made it two steps difficult. But again, there may be some issues discovered maybe in future, right? Yeah, app planting on Windows uh, 8 based phones. I have been using Windows 8 on my Dell laptop. So if I want to install any app, it says ask me to log into Microsoft account. Plus many people use uh, Microsoft's mailing services. So if you can spam them, with links to exploit or to sneak applications. Yeah, I mean, there's possibility where you can do app planting over uh, over uh, Microsoft's credentials on Windows-based phones. App forking is another thing which I'm working on and maybe I will talk in future conferences. So it's just like you have, you install an app and it install other apps. Okay, app forking another app. Right. So, currently I'm working on possibilities of app forking. So, I I guess some of you guys may be working on this. This is a very interesting thing because uh, Google allows you once once you have installed an app, uh, you can automatically send an update. Now, Google won't come into picture when you are sending an update to uh, the apps installed on your user's phone, right? So you can send any update. So, I mean, there is possibility where you can totally change the behavior of an application and make it install other apps, right? That's quite possible. What was the attitude of the banks when you approached them about this? Were they responsive? Oh, this flaw, this. Okay, so that I haven't. This, this is this is the first time I'm disclosing it. So I haven't been to the banks for this, and. Uh, now, the thing is, uh, they will be seeing how how easy it's to exploit. Now, since Google has patched this, uh, I, I think they will be alarmed, but. Uh, they will be easy now. They think that it's Google's headache and it's not their headache because it's it's flowing, it was a security gap in uh, Play Store. So they don't have to worry. I mean, at the end of the day, the, the vulnerability is that someone can capture your one-time password via SMS. And that, right? right. And to be able to reuse that, they also need to compromise your ID and your password because they don't have to piece it together. They have to piece it together. So it's all zip mode. Zeus man in the middle type of attack has been around for a couple of years, and the banks, I believe, are aware of it and concerned with it. And, you know, at some point, you know, it's a risk management thing. How big of a problem is it? How many people are exploiting it? How commercialized, commoditized does it become? Right. That they need to step up the bar and go to the next level of authentication. You can't rely on SMS anymore. It's got long in the tooth. It's just not working. Yes. Yeah, so a lot of economics and finance goes yeah. behind that. Yeah. I, I agree. I mean, if these little stupid devices, tokens, whether it's RSA, whether it's, it's another type of device that doesn't have the level of intelligence, the level of uh, accessibility that someone can exploit it, you know, it stands on its own. I mean, that's, it almost seems like that's the, you know, the cat and mouse type approach. That's yeah. the thing you need. So, and I work for a bank. <laughs> oh, okay, cool. <laughs> so, uh, let me see. I mean, how the banks will react when I go back in India? Because, uh, uh, with due respect to all the terms and conditions of Black Hat, I haven't uh, talked about it. So, whatever has been published by Black Hat, it's only that's the information which is out. Okay. So, this was supposed 
I, I just wanted to have a clo- very tight control on this vulnerability and keep it zero day as long as possible. Um, but again, six months is a very, very lo- long time to keep any information secret, at least with Google, because there are 100 people who are trying every day or every hour just for the lucrative bug bounty program which they have. Right. So it's it's very difficult to keep a zero day. Otherwise, I had submitted this as a zero day uh, presentation. Okay, so that was on the future of app forking. Yeah, so what I would like to conclude or summary of my presentation. Mobile, yes, is your strongest identity, right? But if you lose your mobile or if there is a man in your mobile, then yeah, it's it's a big concern. That can screw your life. It can screw your financial equations as well. App planting, okay. The flaw in App Store can be leveraged to install applications silently. So this is how I would like to define the app planting. And the challenges, as I have told you, uh, you can't differentiate an op- app installation, uh, whether it has been initiated by user or he was strict to install a, uh, application. I mean, differentiating that is very, very difficult. Awareness. Yeah, so... the very basic purpose of this presentation is to make you aware that there can be such type of attack. So just pay attention to what the top bar says. It's an update or it's a new installation. Right. And uh, there are a couple of other people I would like to thank you. I would like to thank you all. You you are here. You were patient. And uh, you answered my questions also. Thank you. It was very interactive. Uh, Big thanks to uh, Team Black Hat. They have been doing very good work. Uh, Vivek Ramchandran, uh, if he is here, I would like to thank him. Uh, his securitytube.net is a website where everyone learns uh, about anything or everything in security. So I have learned a lot of things from there. Nalcon and Jailbreak team, uh, they are the people who have helped me in the background. Yeah, that's again Captain Dhoni <laughs> calling out time out. So he has been inspiring us. Uh, yeah, he's Captain Cool. He's known as Captain Cool. So, uh, my thanks to all you guys. If you have more questions, please come up with the question. I mean, your questions were all, always welcome, even between the talks, even before the talks, and even after the talks. Yeah, please. So, you're talking about app planting for Android and app forking for Windows Mobile. No, you can do app forking in on any platform. It's You have an app already running on uh, your device. And that app is pulling more apps. Okay, but you're talking about Windows Phone and Android. Did you have a look at iOS or don't have to look at iOS? Or is there a reason not to look at it? Actually, yes. There's a very good reason. Uh, my company doesn't pay me well, so I can't afford Apple, <laughs> Apple devices. Uh, plus, there are no uh, very good financial plans in India for iOS. Uh, apart from that, uh, I'm a big fan of Linux, so I don't go for iOS. But yeah, as a researcher, I should... Pay attention to that. I will, with all respect to your question, I mean, I will, I will do that work to be very comprehensive. Thanks for uh, motivating me for that. <laughs> Here, <laughs> thank you. Yes, please, sir. Right, but then it kills the entire purpose of having the install over the air. Right? So the thing is, uh, it's like fire and forget. You just choose an app, click install, and whenever your phone is in range, in good range, the app installation will start automatically. So otherwise, if you urgently need an app, you have to uh, search for it on the phone, then install it, and uh, so it, it becomes a little cumbersome. So just for making it convenient, they have started over the air installation. But now if you again have confirmation from mobile, etc., then that will be again uh, not solving the purpose of over there installation. So it just kills the user experience. Yeah. So security, is this, we are coming to the same paradigm where security is a security and user convenience go in opposite direction. Yes, please. Yeah, but, but Google changed it now to have an 
additional confirmation box when you yes box. yes but if you have cross site scripting uh, available you can still like select submit <clears throat> Yes, I mean, uh, so uh, the no. The thing is, when when your exercise uh, exercise is kicking up, right? So you got it. So it should click at the page load. I'm just clicking the install, right? So then I have to capture that event when the dialog box is presented and I should have an access at that point. So to click OK, so you do install, then you do OK, right? That's the additional box. So they, at that point of time, I should have an access. Or simple way is, another way is to grab the cookie, send it, send it to you, then you frame a request and then do the app initiation. So that's the classic thing, old classic way to exploit and access by grabbing the cookies. But this is more simple and more instant. Means you have seen uh, the video. The moment I uh, clicked on the link, it just started. Within a few seconds, it started loading the app on my phone. Right. Any more questions? Yeah, I'd like to just raise some food for thought. I think a lot of the cellular carriers around the world are introducing VoIP applications, the ability to receive and send voice transmissions when you're out with cellular range. Um, O2 are doing it, Vodafone, SFR, etc. Mm -hmm. I came across a situation last weekend where I installed an O2 app um, called Tugo, it's okay. a tele telephonica, and uh, it completely messed up my corporate voicemail. <laughs> and the reason why was because Tugo overrode the VoIP transmission circuit, it overrode the USSD transmission system. Mm -hmm. So I tried to reset it across the GSM channel, but I couldn't because the VoIP channel on the Android platform put precedence. Oh, okay. So what, the, what, I, what I tried and I actually succeeded was I generated a VoIP USSD code mm -hmm. to my mobile, uh, which I could subvert, and it then takes precedence. So using your technique, Mm -hmm. possible to subvert and do a bit of app planting via the VoIP based USSD transmission channel. But of course that's a structural problem yes. that affects pretty well all smartphones, not just droids, but also iPhones, Blackberries and Windows smartphones. And I think what, what's interesting about your presentation is it's a structural flaw. Yes. And I think, sure, Google have fixed it, but I think it can be repeated with a slightly different attack vector. Right. And were I to be Google, I would be very concerned about this, simply because it's just it's a structural problem that's inherent within their Google Play format. So they've actually got to redesign the whole infrastructure right. to solve it, and they can't do it because they'd have to reinvent the Android platform. <laughs> that's that's a that's a bigger challenge to uh, yeah. solve. So they can just have mitigation. So it's now just uh, two steps harder. So yeah, as as he pointed out, so there may be an access vector right at that point, and which you can exploit, and maybe in future you can do that. So any more questions? Okay, cool. Thanks to you all, and uh, yeah, thank you.